Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started this morning. Thank you everyone for joining us for our first of today's Design Innovation Month webcast. My name is Chris Dubuque, located out in our Portland, Oregon office, one of the application engineers here with computer-aided technology, and I'm going to be helping out today's presenter, kind of sticking out behind the scenes. Uh, we'll be going through a presentation today from Kyle Elias on the Inflow technology team, one of the PLM application engineers. Uh, before we get started, I'll just mention a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, this webcast is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the CATI YouTube channel in a few days. Uh, because of the recording, I have everyone's audio muted and ask yourselves to please stay muted so we can get a nice clean audio stream. Any background sounds will get captured by the recording and uploaded to YouTube as well. If anyone has any type of WebEx technology issue, uh, please use the chat. I'm listed as the participant of CATI. Uh, feel free to chat anything at me or just chat it to everyone and I'll address you through the, through the chat system. Excuse me. I believe with all of that said, I'll turn the webcast over to Kyle. All right. Uh, thank you for the intro there. Um, hello, everyone. Name is Kyle. I'm the applications engineer here with Mflow, and uh, we're going to be showcasing <coughs> showcasing a little bit of the 3D experience platform. So I promise you guys, it's going to be a short presentation, and then after that, we're going to go click around in the tool and uh, show you guys maybe what your day inside of the tool would look like. So I just had uh, this uh, presentation a couple of days ago, which kind of went through the initial phases, what the, you know, very basic stuff like getting started um, look like. So this is a little bit more in-depth and uh, a little bit of a continuation of that. So um, when I presented this a couple of days ago, uh, I showed this slide. I want to show again, just in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, most people ask me a lot of times, like, why, why should I move to the cloud? Why does it make any sense? And uh, the best way I found to explain that is to kind of investigate how we're doing things today versus what the cloud uh, represents. So today, if we are thinking about the apps and everything that we use to go about our daily lives, um, there are many different ones, and all of them require a large IT infrastructure, and they require a large IT overhead. Um, Microsoft Office 365 alone has more than 15 applications that are available today. So this just makes our lives a little bit easier, especially because those apps don't communicate really well with each other. So it's kind of hard to move things along if you want to transfer something from Excel to Outlook, vice versa, GrabCAD, whatever the case may be. Uh, I think we get the gist of things. What the platform really represents or what they uh, are trying to focus on is to be that one-stop shop for most of these. So of course, it's not going to replace everything you use today, but it's going to replace most of them. So, and then that cloud, of course, doesn't require any IT infrastructure, doesn't require any IT overhead because as long as you have a computer and access to the internet, you'll be able to get to it. It's that one subscription service, and most importantly, all the apps are integrated and they talk to each other very nicely. And we'll see that here in a little bit. So our values for uh, moving to the platform are, you know, that unified experience. You have that dashboard. It's fully customizable to what you want to do. You kind of go to it and grab which application makes sense to you. And it's available to not only engineers, but basically a whole entire company with all the apps that it provides. Of course, it's designed for the cloud and it's designed for sharing and collaboration. Um, the audience today is um, starting with the younger generation, so recent graduates, professors, and, and people that can start using it right away, that don't have a lot of data, and can just kind of leverage everything the platform has to offer right away. We're also looking for innovators and entrepreneurs and small startups that uh, are looking for something new and something that's available on the go. Of course, current users are always a goal, you know, people that are trying to move to the cloud or want to have a little bit more functionality outside of the office. And of course, people that are outside the office all the time, um, they can definitely leverage the platform uh, 
if they're traveling it out. So today, we're going to focus on four different roles, and those are business innovation, industry innovation, project planner, and 3D component designer. Um, these are the roles that make sense to me as an engineer to use. Uh, if you're in marketing, if you're in purchasing, you probably use something else. But as an engineer, these would give you the, the amount of functionality necessary to go through your daily life, and uh, I'll showcase that here in a little bit. So a short description of each one of them. Business innovation is meant for that collaboration with your industry. So it allows people to kind of get gather some information from the internet. It has that mail app, it has um, the web link. So it has a bunch of applications that allow you to communicate with the outside world, outside of your organization. Industry innovation is meant for internal collaboration. So this would give you your life cycle, your tasks, so things that allow you to communicate and collaborate with your team. Project planner, that's pretty much self-explanatory. It gives you the project planning application, which is critical. It allows you to kind of keep track of your projects, see a Gantt chart of it, create tasks, create milestones, attach files, and things of that nature. And finally, 3D component designer. This is very important because it gives you access to the 3D experience add-in, which lives inside of SolidWorks. So most of our engineers want to work inside of SolidWorks. They don't want to have to go somewhere else to grab their files. So the add-in will give them that access. From inside of SolidWorks, they're able to get, grab files, see tasks, and just go about their daily life. They don't have to keep going back to the platform every day, all day. So before we start clicking around, I just want to show a little uh, or a major difference between 3D Drive and 3D Space. These are two different applications inside the platform, but um, each one of them is in a different role. So 3D Drive is in that business innovation role, which is meant here for that outside access. 3D Space is in the industry innovation role, so that's one difference between them. 3D Drive acts pretty much like a uh, cloud drive. So it acts like Google Drive, or it acts like Microsoft OneDrive, and things like that, Dropbox. It's, per it's your personal cloud storage that's available to you. And 3D Space is pretty much your cloud environment. It's all the files that your company owns, that's where you would live. It would live in that 3D Space application or environment. Of course, 3D Drive is meant for that externally um, sharing with other people, and 3D Space is all more of that native content from your company that only you and people that work in your company might have access to. So with that, I'm just going to stop uh, showing you PowerPoint, and now uh, we're going to go ahead, go through a small change, and see what the tool is all about. So what do you guys see right now? It's uh, Windows 10 screen. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into the platform um, to show you guys how that's done. Close it down here, open Internet Explorer again, uh, navigate to the platform. And then here you see my initial dashboard that I have it reconfigured. So the first uh, thing I want to show you guys today is we're going to start with the tasks, and this is using that project planning app to kind of show you guys um, everything that is to know about this project. So today we're going to work on this drone development project and uh, show you guys what that's all about. So in the project planner tab, I have this project planning application, which of course allows me to manage this project. So in here, I can see a quick summary of my tasks and milestones, and I have a bunch of uh, data to allow me to communicate this project maybe to my manager if I'd like. I also have a schedule that allows me to see the tasks that are pending on this project and that are comp complete, and also see the milestones here, complete the design or project delivery. And here, I can also link things, so if I do this, platform will know that this milestone has to happen after that. 
So it's just very intuitive in how you do things. Of course, you can add members to this project. But what we're really here to do today is add that camera mount slot on our drone. So in order to get this task started, all I really have to do, drag from the to-do to an in-progress stage, and then um, let everybody know that I'm working on this now. If I click this and click edit, we'll be able to see things, descriptions, due dates, and things that are related to this task. Here we see that it says, please review the attached markup. So in order to do that, we are going to, of course, open that assembly in our markup application. So just to showcase you guys how that is done, I'm going to remove this here from my bookmarks. And if this was the first time I was going through this task, I would grab this attachment here and I would throw it in my bookmark. What that does is it just bookmarks it so it makes it easy for me to find it later on throughout the platform. As we can see here, I'm going to change to my markup area. And remember that task says there's a markup that I should review before I go do this task. So that's what I'm trying to attempt to do. I'm going to attempt to review the markup related to that assembly. So drag that from my bookmark to my 3D markup application. And what that will do is that they'll render an image of that uh, 3D file and it will also allow me to review any markups that may be related to it. So there we go. I'm gonna switch this around here a little bit to make something that is a little bit easier to see. So that's our drone. And remember, we're trying to add camera mount slots, and that's what our task required. So I'm going to go to my review tab here and see if there are any markups related to this assembly. It looks like there is. So I'm going to click on that. And right away, we can see there are a couple of slides that somebody marked it up and are telling us to work on. So our first slide here says, hey, add a camera, camera mount slot. Our second slide also says, add a camera mount slot and also has an arrow that says, hey, you should arrow, add a camera mount slot to this location. So now we reviewed their task, we opened this markup, and we know exactly what we have to do. What's next is really opening this inside of SOLIDWORKS and making that change inside of SOLIDWORKS. So in order to do that, I'm going to open my Product Explorer here. And again, I'm going to drag that attachment that I bookmarked right into my Product Structure Explorer. And what that does is that just allows me review this assembly and what, what it is all about. Um, this product structure explorer looks and feels very similar to the where use tab inside of SOLIDWORKS PDM. So some of you guys used SOLIDWORKS PDM in the past. It's very similar to that. It has like revisions, who is working on it, the type of file and things like that. What we really want to do here is just right click on this, open with SOLIDWORKS. And what that would do is that will open that assembly inside of SOLIDWORKS for us. Here we go. And there it is. We are now able to see that CAT assembly that we're, we were just working on inside of the platform. Now it's inside of SOLIDWORKS for us. Um, I will show you guys this. Um, most of our engineers, they don't want to keep toying around the platform and they don't have to. If I would go to here and go to my collaborative tasks application, you see that add camera mount slots task, it's right here inside of SOLIDWORKS for me. So that would be a lot faster way to kind of uh, um, access this attachment because I can just draw, drag and drop it right into SOLIDWORKS. But I was trying to show you guys, you know, that that uh, 
Project Explorer application and the markup application and everything that you can do maybe um, as a collaboration type of format. So in here, we're going to go add our slots. So in order to do that, we're going to grab this bottom tab, bottom plate here and add some slots to it. The first thing I will do is, of course, reserve this file. And reserving it, it works very similar to checking a file out inside of SolidWorks PDM. So once I reserve it, then I control this file, I own it, and nobody else can make any changes to it. I will also increase its revision because I'm creating a different rev of this file by Actually, I'm just going to keep that name as, as default. And what that will do is that will increase that revision and bump it up. So then everybody knows that I've been working on it and there is a new revision of that part. You see that little plus sign that tells me there's a new revision of this part. And in order to grab it, I have to click on replace my revision. So you can see now revision B1 has been created just now. So I'm going to go grab it. So as we can see, just like that, I created revision B1 inside of SolidWorks, and I'm going to start making changes to it. So we're going to add slots. So in order to do that, I'm going to simply unsuppress this feature that was suppressed. And uh, now we can see that some slots are added to our drone, which would allow somebody to mount a camera to it. So now we can also see that the final assembly has changed. And I'm going to reserve that as well. Otherwise, I won't be able to save it. So now these are the two parts that have changed. And I am going to go ahead and save it. So as you can see now, we are change we are saving the whole assembly back to the cloud. And we're also going to say add a comment here that says added camera mount slots. Once this, this is complete, we also have the option of changing the maturity state of this file. Um, again, if you guys are familiar with SOLIDWORKS PDM, maturity states work very similar to a workflow. So that would mean we can change this maturity state here from an in work to maybe a release process or a release state. And that can be done right from here from inside of SOLIDWORKS. So now we can see now our REV is here, our files are saved. I'm going to go ahead and unreserve this so I don't have control anymore. And once I do that, I can try to show you guys, you can see here, these files are read only. That's because I just unreserved it. And in order to take control of it, I had to reserve that file. So now our task is complete. We added those slots. So we're going to go ahead and make sure our task is marked complete. In order to do that, I'm just going to come in here to the add camera mount slots task and drag it to done. And what that does is that emails everybody that's related to that task and says, hey, this task is now completed. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys today is back inside the platform, we're going to attempt to compare these two revisions and see if anything has changed inside of them.
just want to go back here and grab the name of the file we're trying to compare. And it is this one. All right, so we are going to look for it first. Seems like my internet connection is not cooperating here, so I'm just going to refresh the page and try to search for that plaque again. There we go. Let's attempt to search for that part that we just changed. There it is. You can see that our part with the slots is right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to bookmark this part. If our bookmarks app loads here, it's going to load it again. I apologize for the slow internet connection, but uh, WebEx is taking most of the bandwidth here. Right, so now we can grab this flag here and, gra and drag it into our bookmarks. What that does is it just really makes it easy to open it somewhere else inside of the system. So now I have revision A and revision B. We're going to move to our compare area and attempt to compare those two parts. From our bookmark editor, I'm going to drop my plaque here, revision B, and also revision A. And what that allows me to do is that allows me to see the differences between them. This is fairly simple because it's only one part. But um, if it was like a multiple part assembly, then you would see line by line the differences between them. And if it is a supported part, it will also show you um, a 3D uh, rendering of that part as well. So those are the main apps I wanted to show you guys about today, how to move back and forth between the platform and SOLIDWORKS, how to make some changes, how to maybe work on your project. And in here we can see that pro that task has been completed and that was done from inside of SOLIDWORKS. So if you guys have any questions, I can answer them now. If not, I'm just going to go back to my presentation. Hey, Kyle, it's Chris. I have not seen any questions come through the chat. All right. Thank you, Chris. So just as a quick summary here, we talked a little bit about the key benefits of the cloud, what it really is. We talked about the roles that we use. So we use that business innovation. We use that industry innovation. We also use the 3D component designer with that connected to SOLIDWORKS. And we also use the project planner that allows you to kind of keep track of our projects, create tasks, milestones, and things like that. We also took a look at 3D markup and how markups look inside the platform. We also understood what reserving a file really is and the compare application. So with that, I just wanted to thank everybody for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, again, we're here to answer them. If not, just thank you for coming by.